Atrial fibrillation shouldn't really be seen as a standalone medical condition in my opinion. The heart has unfortunately lost its ability to either intermittently or permanently go through the usual SA node to AV node conduction pathway and the atria are just trying to compensate. Medical conditions as seemingly simple as hypertension or high blood pressure can over time add strain to the left atrium where the pulmonary veins are, which causes stretch or strain and remodels the left atria causing it to enlarge, which then enhances its automaticity or ability to generate an action potential when it's really not supposed to, which then hijacks the entire system, as with atrial flutter, with the usual source being disruption in the cavotricuspid isthmus area of the heart, with the usual driver being under-recognized pulmonary hypertension owing to grossly overlooked untreated OSA, or obstructive sleep apnea, obesity, COPD, or smoker's lung, etc., etc., in society now. Drugs are sometimes useful in helping managing the symptoms of atrial fibrillation, but are often not great at keeping people out of the hospital. For example, beta blockers for atrial fibrillation rate control. Early rhythm control strategies using medications like amiodarone, sodalol, flecainide, or propafenone, or via ablation may help to keep patients out of the hospital for longer or prevent them from developing a tachymediated cardiomyopathy or weakening of the heart muscles. For example, when they're in atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular rate for too long, say no to drugs.